I bet you want a new GTR or a Supra or even the new Z coming out of Nissan. Who doesn't? But that shit's expensive. So I put on my little red thinking cap and thought to myself, what are some cheap alternatives to some of the greatest cars ever made that we can no longer afford? And as you can guess, this list is about to ruffle some frickin' feathers. But I won't go there just yet. Let's start with one of your favorite cars and mine, the Nissan GTR. Or more specifically, Godzilla, the R32 generation. This is the Japanese monster that won nearly every race it ever entered. It's so good we put it on a t-shirt, which you can buy up here. Helps support the channel. It is basically one of the best cars ever made. It's one of the most iconic Japanese cars ever made. It's also 40 frickin' thousand dollars today, which is just an insane amount of money. Look, I can't afford it, neither can you. Neither can anyone on this channel, except maybe Brad. But let's just break it down. The R32 GTR is an all-wheel drive car with about 270 horsepower and goes zero to 60 in about 5.6 seconds. When you break it down to the numbers, you can get a comparable vehicle for about half the money. And I'm not talking about the technically a Skyline Infiniti G37X, that would be too easy. They're also way too heavy and they sound like farts. Instead, let's go to an entire different country and talk to the Germans. Let's talk about an inspired racing heritage performance car with all wheel drive, otherwise known as the Volkswagen Golf R, which thanks to its near identical power to weight ratio as the R32 GTR, will keep up with any of them on the streets for about half the price. At 20,000 bucks, the Volkswagen Golf R is actually a great deal no matter how you slice it, even if you aren't looking for an R32 GTR. But let's face it, when I'm talking about German sports cars, the Golf R is not the first name that comes to your mind. I bet what you're thinking is the BMW M3, and one of the greatest M3s of all time is the first one, the E30 M3, right? If you're like me, back in the early aughts when you were shopping for a sports car, the E30 M3 was an expensive yet attainable option at around 20 to 30,000 bucks. But that's still 30 grand for an ancient BMW. And they must be like 40,000 bucks now, right? $70,000? I mean, what the hell? This is a 30-year-old commuter car with a four-banger. And it's worth more than Brad's R8, probably because it runs. Look, I love 80s and 90s German DTM cars. I mean, the racing was so fun to watch. And I want to relive that on city streets. But I don't have $70,000. Who does? If you want to relive the heyday of German sports car racing, guess what? There's another bratwurst-eating, fire-spitting saloon car that you can get for a hell of a lot less. It's from Mercedes, and it's called the 190e. In fact, the 190e versus BMW M3 rivalries is one of the best tales of all time. Let me know down below if you'd love to hear me tell that tale. They're both fast cars. They've both won DTM championships. And they will both be mistaken for your grandfather's old boring German car no matter where you go. So if you're chasing DTM clout and you just need a touring car from the late 80s, the 190E is an absolute steal at only 25,000 bucks compared to a comparable M3, which is like an insane price now. Now, I know what a lot of you are thinking. What about the 190E Evolution 2? Well, well, no mere mortal can afford those these days. Those are like $200,000. Well, you know, go with the E30 M3 if you're really that into DTM cars. There is, though, an evolution that you kind of can buy today. But, you know, prospects are looking slim as time goes on. And this is the last hurrah from that Japanese car company that went completely insane and turned their flagship car into a crummy crossover. You know it, I know it. We're talking about the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution. But you're not not gonna be able to get the one that everybody wants because, you know, this video is about cheaper alternatives. And the Mac Daddy of used Lancer Evos is the Evo 9, which is the last one they made before they stopped making them with the 4G63. Those are now creeping past 40,000 bucks and approaching 50 quite quickly. Especially if you want one with a six speed, those are getting increasingly rare to get. So what do you do if you want a Mitsubishi rally racing legend? You get an older one. I mean, it's not like you were gonna leave it stock or anything. You're gonna modify it. And guess what? The older Evos, 
same engine, same mods. They look almost the same. They perform similarly. Driving around in an old Evo, you're really not gonna notice much of a difference. Plus, you're gonna have to import one from Japan, which means everyone's gonna think you're really cool as you drive around on the wrong side of the car. Believe me, I know, I'm doing it now. Honestly, if I saw you in a parking lot and your buddy was there with an Evo 9 and you were there with an Evo 6, I'd wanna talk to you. So what's the damage? Well, a newer Evo is gonna run you like 50,000 bucks. An imported one closer to 20. You can't tell me that an Evo 9 is two and a half times cooler than an Evo 6. Paint it red, throw some white rims on it, and you have something that is far cooler than any modern Mitsubishi. Now, on the total opposite end of the sports car metaverse, the Lancer Evolution is like a delicate, sharp surgeon's knife. And an American muscle car is... Well, it's the buster sword from Final Fantasy VII. Come on, Chocobo. It's big. It's dumb. It's made of metal and it's f awesome. And one of the best, most muscly, most roided out muscle cars ever is the 760 horsepower Ford Mustang GT500, which are only like $72,000 for a Mustang. I mean, yeah, it's a really badass Mustang, but it's a pony car and ponies are for babies. Instead, you should opt for an even better American legend that also makes way too much horsepower. And no, for once, I'm not talking about the Hellcat that your dad wants, and I want. I'm talking about your dad's dad's car, your grandpa's car, the Chevy Corvette Z06. The C6 generation of Z06 has nearly the same power to weight ratio as the Ford Mustang GT500, and they cost like nothing. I mean, fine, they're like 30 grand, but think of all you're getting for that money. That is less than half the price of the Ford. And you can even get it in colors that match your golf pants. Plus, you know, unlike the GT500, a Z06 can go around a corner. Not great, but like, we're talking about comparing it to a muscle car here. The C6 Z06 is much more of a complete package of a car than a Ford GT500. Plus, it kind of looks like a supercar. A Ford Mustang GT500 just looks like a Ford Mustang. Don't get me wrong, I love the GT500. But if we're talking about something that costs half as less and goes just as fast, I'll just watch videos of GT500s doing burnouts on the internet and drive my Z06. Now the GT500 and the Z06 are both American legends that you can get in America. Let's talk about a car that we all want, but none of us can actually get here. And that's the super exciting, super adorable, and super fast Toyota GR Yaris. But since you can't buy one here for another 25 years, what are you gonna do while you suck on that vape pen? You're gonna get yourself a Subaru WRX. I mean, what is a GR Yaris really when it comes down to it? It's a little car. It's got a wheelbase of only like 101 inches. It makes nearly 300 horsepower to all of the wheels. And it can hit 60 in a little over five seconds. This is just such a great recipe for fun and I can't believe Toyota doesn't think that we want this here. Makes me want to raise a stink about it. Like, you know, give them the stink eye. Sorry, I think Brad wrote that joke. Hey, yes, I am talking about the Stink Eye generation of WRX. It is essentially like the same car as a GR Yaris. It also has a 101 inch wheelbase. It also makes around 300 horsepower. It also drives all four wheels. It also goes zero to 60 in a little over five seconds. Even better yet, these are one of the cheapest WRXs you can buy today. People don't like them as much as the Bug Eyes and Hawk Eyes, and they're getting kind of up there in age. They're getting a little dated. But who cares what it looks like on the outside when you're driving it? All you're gonna know is you spent 12,000 bucks to have essentially the same car as that GR Yaris we're all pining over. In your face, Yaris. I still kind of want one though. But you know, Toyota letting us down, that's no surprise. You know who's always got our back? Nissan. And of course, the new Z looks absolutely freaking fantastic. So great, in fact, that I'm gonna make a whole video on cars that are cheaper than the new Z that are just as fast. So consider this segment a sneak preview of that video coming soon. So what is the new Z? It's a 400 horsepower rear wheel drive car with a stick shift. All for around 40,000 bucks. That's like the deal of the century right now. What else can you get that has all of that for about half the price? And Trust me, when I found out about this car for this price, my mind was blown. And yeah, 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 
You guys are all gonna say this car isn't cheap, but when you're talking about something that has the performance of the new Z for around 20,000 bucks, you're talking about a performance car deal. So for around 20 grand, you can get today an E90 M3, which has around 400 horsepower, which is rear wheel drive, which has a freaking save the manuals manual. And also has the prestige, like the Z, of generations of great sports cars behind it. It just doesn't have any reliability. But who cares? You saved so much money buying this instead of a new Z. You're not gonna care, especially when you hear it wail. And look, I almost didn't believe this when I found out, but in like 30 seconds, I was able to find this BMW M3 for 23,000 bucks, which means you guys who are a lot better at the internet than me can probably find one for even less. Now, before all you BMW fanboys get on my back about reliability issues and BMWs because their inline sixes are so fantastic, believe me, I know. That's why I'm about to tell you something very controversial. Instead of buying one of Japan's greatest sports cars, the Honda S2000, you should buy a BMW Z four. And if you think that is treading on hallowed ground, I hear you, but just wait. First, both the Z4 and the S2000 both weigh under 3,000 pounds. They both make just over 200 horsepower, although the Z actually makes a little bit more torque. Don't know the difference between horsepower and torque? You should check out this video Trav made and then come back here. Both are ragtops. Both do a sub seven second zero to 60. And both look pretty much exactly the same to your grandmother and your Tinder date. Now, don't get me wrong. I am on record saying that the S2000 is one of the greatest Japanese cars ever made. And I'm not saying that just because a car matches another car's numbers that you get the same experience. What I am saying though is that Honda S2000s are skyrocketing in price. And if you can't afford one and you dream of driving a drop top manual that screams through the mountains and drives like a dream, and you can't afford a $30,000 Honda S2000, then you my friend should get yourself a cheap ass BMW Z4. Because behind the wheel, even in tests by professionals, they perform almost identically. You're going to spend 25,000 bucks on a Honda S2000 and you're going to spend 10 on this Z4 and you're not going to miss out on anything other than the badge and the respect. And the blinker fluid on that BMW was probably filled to the brim. So it's up to you. Own a piece of history for a lot of money or just own a great performance car for half the money. It's kind of the name of this whole video. Good call. Smart. And now for the part where you all get mad at me. I probably say this in every single video I put out. The Mark IV Supra is overrated. And if that didn't make you mad, I have an alternative to the Supra that is gonna make you even madder. But here's the deal, listen to me closely. You can't just get mad at me because you love the Supra and it's the car you drive in Forza. Hear me out here. The Mark IV Supra weighs a chunky 3,500 pounds and makes just over 300 horsepower. And it's basically only famous today because the engine can be built to crazy levels, but you know, how many people do you know that actually did that? They're 30 years old and they're only going up in value. Probably pretty soon, you're not gonna be able to get one for under six figures. It's gonna happen pretty quick. And there is a car, brand new today, that weighs 3,500 pounds, makes just over 300 horsepower, and has an absolutely huge aftermarket community just waiting to have you tune that thing to a million horsepower. It even has two little back seats in the back so you can, you know, use it as a daily driver, just like the Supra. And guess what else it has? It has a big frickin' turbo, just like the Supra. Can you guess what it is? If you can, write it down below and I bet you're wrong. Get your hate fingers ready to type in the comments because I'm gonna tell you that instead of a Mark IV Supra, you should consider getting the EcoBoost Mustang. Yeah, yeah, bring it, bring it. Give me the hate, write it down there. Make reaction videos, react to this video and I will comment and like your video. But it's true. You could get an EcoBoost Mustang, which on paper is pretty much a Supra for 15,000 bucks. It's remarkably similar to the Supra. It's stick, it's turbo, it's rear wheel drive, and it is tunable to hell. The EcoBoost Stang can be built to a lot of horsepower, especially with the $70,000 you saved on the price tag. It's pretty much the Supra experience, except, you know, internet commenters won't run up to you at the gas station. <laughs> From my experience, it's kind of a nice thing to not have. This is a Mark IV Supra just slathered in sweet baby rays and no healthcare. Okay, okay, okay. 
Hold on, I have a palate cleanser. If you're still watching this video and you're looking for a Mark IV Super alternative, there is actually a really good one that's really cheap. And it's a car I've been talking about continuously over the last couple months. And that is the 2JZ GTE powered Toyota Aristo that you can get for like 12 grand. It's got the same Supra motor down to the bolts. The only problem with it is you don't get the stick, so you're going to have to spend some money there. But you can have a great Supra-like experience in a four-door with the Aristo. If the EcoBoost Stang isn't for you, which not for many people, get yourself an Aristo for a tenth the cost of a Mark IV Supra and build it to the moon with all your crazy ideas. And let me know if you do, because I don't think anybody actually builds two JZs to that high of horsepower that often. I think it's all a bunch of hype. Anyway, that's my video. What'd you like? What kind of car would you like to see an alternative to? While you're down there commenting, like the video, please subscribe, please turn on that bell. We love making content like this for you guys, and we want to keep doing it in 2022, and we want to do a lot more of it. Either way, comment or don't, like or don't, it has been Ideal hanging out with you guys. See you next time.